Hi everybody, Sandra Duran Wilson here and welcome back to another week of Mixed Media Soul Sparks where every week I come in with new mixed media painting techniques, studio tips and inspiration exercises. Things that'll keep your artwork fresh and keep you in the flow of creating your work. So last week I stopped at showing you a piece where I put the soft gel gloss through the stencil and it was this tree stencil that I put on top of this little painting and when I pulled it off it was white but now you can see that it's clear it's dry and what that is going to be is like a resist so I'm going to come back over with some paint on top of this where the clear gel is that's going to keep that color vibrant so I've got some white and a tiny bit of that Daryllide yellow here. And I'm just going to pick it up on my brush. And let me get a paper towel ready because I'm going to wipe off most of it. And I think my brush was a little wet, so I'm going to add some more white over here. There we go. I'm going to paint this over. And now you can start to see where that tree is. And while it's still wet, I'm just going to come back. And wipe it back. Now I can come back in with different colors. And if this were dry and I wanted to come back in with a purple, I would make sure that this color is dry. And then I can come back in with a purple on top. So let's just try that and see what it looks like because I can dry this pretty quickly. And you see how my brush, I'm going back and forth both ways because I want that paint to catch those edges. And then when I go to wipe it off, you know, you don't want to wipe it all off. There we go. So let me get this dry. So I've got that layer dry and now I'm going to mix these two colors of quinacridone violet and dioxazine purple. They're both very dark colors but when you put them on thin and then wipe them off you're going to see what happens. I'm not even mixing them together I'm just picking them up side by side with my brush. And do you see how I can start to get this shadow effect. Sometimes I, I like it just more on top and other times I can come in just a little water on a paper towel and start to wipe that back. The panel was hot from drying it so if that happens I can go back in with alcohol and see how easily I can remove that dry paint just like we did with that stencil erase, which kind of reminds me, I mean, we could even put that stencil back on and create a different effect. But building this up with these kind of layers, using the clear gel is going to give you this kind of antique look. And it's not going to be perfect, and that's the best part about it, is that you get little darks and lights. And that is how we work with that uh, clear gel. Now, of course, you could come back in with the lighter color on top and just kind of keep working those layers. So however you want to work with it, see you can accentuate a part of it. So another stencil trick, and I've got a couple more for you. Now I have a background here that I just painted over a, another sample board, and it's just a fun, interesting background. And I hear sometimes from students that they don't want to use stencils because, you know, there's somebody else's design. Now here I have this wonderful gecko stencil, but I'm only going to use a part of it. 
and I'm gonna kind of make it my own. So rather than using it as a gecko, I'm gonna use these shapes in here. And I've already got that paint put out. Um, and I'm just gonna take a makeup sponge and dab it into here. And this is the trick, is you wanna just kind of dab it. So it's getting mixed right in there. And now I'm just gonna come in here and follow a certain portion of the stencil rather than trying to make it the gecko. Because this surface is smooth, I'm able to get a nice impression. And then I just pull this off and I've got this very strong contrast, interesting pattern that it doesn't look anything like a gecko. So for design wise, what if I wanted to repeat that, some of that pattern over into here? I don't have much paint left out, but just to show you what you could do is you could take it over into here and then keep working your pattern around the surface. Another wonderful stencil trick to just use parts of a stencil. Got one more for you. I got two more for you, a few more for you. So here's another piece, background piece, has some collage, has some paint, a little bit of texture on there. Now I want to add something raised up. I want to put a stencil on here, with some light molding paste. And this stencil is like a type of writing. I could go across this way, but because I don't really care that it looks like writing, I just want shapes. So I'm going to put it on sideways, and I'm just going to take light molding paste. Straight out of the jar, and I just want to apply it over the top part. And because I've selected this stencil that has just very thin lines, it's not going to cover up a lot of that background. I want to put it on thick because I want this paste to stay raised up. And then I pull it off and I get this, <clears throat> I pull it off and I get this very nice pattern that is raised up. But if you selected a stencil that had big wide areas, it would have a different effect. So think about the type of stencil you're going to use to try this effect. And again, I have all of this paste on here. So what am I going to do with it? I'm going to clean it off onto another piece. So let's, let's just take this other piece. And this is how a lot of my paintings happen, is I just start cleaning off from one to the other. I call them throwaway masterpieces. And I'm pressing it down because I want to get the paste off of there. I pull that off, come back in here, repeat the process. Oops. You may not want to do that, but what the heck. We like happy accidents. And then I would take this stencil and put it in the sink and clean it right away because that paste would dry. And now I've got another really nice piece that I can continue to work on. Better than throwing the paste down the sink, right? Join the community and share your creations on social. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks. I look forward to seeing your comments in the comment section.